a rough world, I guess I'm still going to be staying alive. I'm still going to be staying alive. Man, I woke up 1.30. I've been waking up at 2.30. I like to wake up at 3.30 or maybe 4.30. And I've been waking up at 2.30. I don't know why. But I woke up 1.30. 1.30. 1.30 this morning. I laid there in the bed for an hour, over an hour. Could not go to sleep. Wasn't worried about anything. Wasn't upset about anything. Pain level was at a moderate level, like a pain level five, until I got out of the bed and tried to walk. sitting there just thinking a minute about team care and me finding a job. Now if I would work some kind of a part-time job, I mean make $200 a week, that's $800 a month, and they take my team care away. Can't happen. Can't happen. Because the whole purpose of me being able to work is to make enough money to make ends meet. My medical bills, my medical bills, okay. If I have to pay 20% of those medical bills, the amount of money I'll make on the job will have to go to medical bills. Now I don't have enough money to pay my other bills. I don't have the money to pay my other bills. The amount of money that I make, if I was to make $200 a week, plus my disability check, because you can work. See right here? The amount of money you can make while receiving Social Security disability benefits depends on your disability type and the period of time you've been receiving benefits. Substantial Gainful Activity SGA. In 2024, the SGA amount is $1,550 per month for people with disabilities other than blindness and $2,590 per month for people who are blind. If you earn more than the SGA amount, your benefits will stop. Trial work period. During the trial work period, there are no limits on your earnings. Work expenses. Work expenses related to your disability are deducted from your earnings. You can draw Social Security or grow disability and make in 2025 up to $1,620 a month. But if I work and make an extra $800 lose team care, then that means that extra money goes to medical bills, not pay my other bills. And now I don't, now I don't have enough money for groceries. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. It's a thousand dollars a month in co-pays just to keep me alive. They have to consider my medical bills as part, my medical bills is all part of me essentially staying, uh, essentially being able to stay alive. I don't go to a doctor unless it's a life threatening thing. I have to see an endocrinologist or a myxedema coma. I have to see a um, hematologist because I have a blood disease that's life threatening, that's haunting me. And I have seen pain control doctors. There's not one doctor that I don't go that it's a must. And if you look at the amount of money my co-pays is, plus my bills, plus groceries and everything, part-time job's not enough money to pay for everything. Part-time job will not be enough to pay for everything. Something I'll have to give. And what it'll be is the co-pays. And the doctors don't like it. They don't see me anymore. Mr. Collins right here is dead. I'll go and do a myxedema coma. Cardiac arrest. I've got a CPAP machine back there in my bedroom. I stopped breathing 
92 times per hour of the night. With that machine, I only stopped breathing about four or five times an hour. That machine requires supplies and all this stuff. A doctor, that's expensive. I can't pay with my disability check and all my other bills like groceries, utilities, utility stuff, uh, electric bill, phone bill, car insurance, gas. I can't pay all my bills plus um, with my disability check and a part-time job. It's too much money. It's like $100,000 a year to keep me alive. Ain't no way. Cut me off, see what happens. If the co-pays won't get paid, and it's not that I'm being greedy, trying to hold back something from my doctors, it's because I don't have it. There's not enough money there. They'll just have to get over it. Or I'll have to get over it and die. Conditions and symptoms? Pituitary tumors. There are, of course, other causes of each of these symptoms, but if one doesn't think of pituitary tumors then the diagnosis can't be made. So remember to consult your doctor regarding these symptoms, he or she may want to refer you to an endocrinologist or a neuroendocrinologist, prolactinoma and non-functioning pituitary adenoma, infertility, amenorrhea, absence of menses or menstrual periods, oligomenorrhea, irregular sparse menstruation, decreased libido, interest in sex, galacteria, breast milk production leakage nipple discharge, osteoporosis, brittle bones, actually calcium deficient, bone fractures breakage, impotence, visual loss, acromegaly, growth hormone secreting adenoma, sleep apnea, hand, foot, face, or tongue growth or enlargement, swelling, soft tissue enlargement, coarsening of facial features, change in ring or shoe size, spreading teeth, bite difficulties, overbite, underbite, Bell's palsy, facial paralysis on one side, carpal tunnel syndrome, joint and bone aches, pains and tenderness, including foot and tooth pain, gigantism, excessive perspiration, sweating, oily skin, impotence, Cushing's disease, ACDH secreting adenoma, fat buildup in the face, round or moon face, back characteristically the upper back causing a so-called hump, and chest, while the arms and legs to become relatively thin hyperglycemia diabetes, too much sugar in the blood, weak and fragile muscles and bones, backache, flushed, red face, thin skin, increased bruising or bruisability, skin ulcers, hypertension, high blood pressure, weight gain, skin striae, lines wrinkles stretch marks, decreased fertility in men, mood swings, excess hair growth, osteoporosis rib and vertebral compression fractures, Therotrophin, TSH secreting adenomas, weight loss, increased appetite, heart palpitations or irregular heartbeat, supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, tachycardia, rapid heart rate, heat intolerance and increased sweating, tremor, frequent bowel movements fatigue and muscle weakness, exertional intolerance and shortness of breath, oligomenorrhea, decreased menstrual flow, nervousness and irritability, other mental disturbances, sleep disturbances including insomnia, Changes in vision, photophobia, eye irritation, diplopia or exophthalmus, lower extremity edema swelling, sudden paralysis, impaired fertility, alpituitary tumors and craniopharyngiomas, headache, decreased libido, interest desire in sex, menstrual disorders, cold intolerance, excessive perspiration, sweating, decreased appetite, vision impairment, blurriness, blindness, particularly poor peripheral vision, excessive thirst and frequent urination, growth failure, Delayed or premature puberty, nausea, dry skin, constipation, fatigue, low or high blood pressure, hypernatremia, high sodium in the blood, frequent urination, diabetes insipidus. I don't have all those symptoms right there of pituitary gland problems. Some of those symptoms are obviously for women, but... Um, all the symptoms that I'm having were listed there, like constipation problems, the swelling of the stomach, my stomach swells, which I've um, also found out that pituitary gland problems can cause you to be too skinny, too fat, 
It said rounding of the face. It talked about brittle bones. It, it uh, talked about hypertension. Uh, there, it can also cause anxiety disorder, sleep problem. It's like, it's got to be what is making me not sleep well. And a lot of these other symptoms, it's got to be pituitary gland. I mean, a few years ago, when I, I, when I was in Marstown, that was nine years ago. It was sometime past nine years ago, like 10 to 15 years ago. I was in Dr. Langton's office and she ordered an MRI on my brain. And when I came to the follow-up appointment, okay, she told me that she thought I was having a pituitary tumor, but I was not. She says, she called it something. I can't remember what she called it, but she called it something. And then she said, basically what that means is your pituitary gland's not shaped right. And from the way your pituitary gland looks and the way your hormones are acting and your symptoms, you've got to be, this got to be caused by pituitary gland problems. I had a sleep apnea doctor one time. Doc, he, she done a 24 hour sleep study on me, which they figured it out actually in 18 hours. They didn't have to do the full 24 hours. She said I was having hypersomnia, where my brain's, the chemicals in my brain that causes you to be awake and to be asleep are getting confused about what time of the day it is. She told me I had hypersomnia. You know, I'll be sleeping through the night and then I wake up. Like I woke up this morning, 1.30, not been out of sleep since. And most likely sometime between nine and 12 o'clock, I'll need at least two naps. My brain will want to go to sleep. You know what controls your sleep? Your hypothalamus and pituitary gland. All these symptoms, no wonder Dr. Langton. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I don't, I just know what Dr. Langton told me so many years ago. And then last spring, last spring, my current endocrinologist, Dr. McMood, looking at my labs, and he just happened to speak out loud and mumble to me. From looking at your labs, I think you've got something wrong with your pituitary gland, Mr. Collins. He's looking at my labs and he said, well, we'll worry about this next office visit. I'm, I'm gonna see you back in 90 days instead of 60. He either sees me every six months or every three months. When he thinks something's up, something's not right, he'll see me in three months. So I come in a couple of months ago to that office visit and uh, after he said that, after Dr. Langton's told me that, and uh, he told me my pituitary gland looked all right on MRI. He didn't do a MRI on my brain, but I had an MRI on my brain a year ago where they thought I had a stroke and they found out it's just, I got no feeling right here. I got lost feeling right here. It goes down my arm. It comes from my neck problem. And I don't think, I don't think he told me the truth. I think he knows there's something wrong with my pituitary gland. And he just told me, don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with your pituitary gland. I think he told me that because great possibility there's nothing they could do about it. Because if there was something they can do about it, you think something would have been done about it by now. Because it's been 15 years I've had this problem. And I know they know. They just don't, they tell me not to worry about it because there's nothing they can do about it, probably. But I would like to know. I would like to know what's causing me to wake up at 1, 2, 30 in the morning. I'd just like to know. If it was your body, would you like to know? This is the way I slept last night. Look. Look. What's causing me to sleep like that? And this can't be psychosomatic, folks. How do you psychosomatic that every night? How do you psychosomatic my blood work? And by the way, here is what my pituitary gland's supposed to look like. 
And here is what I Googled a normal pituitary gland is supposed to look like. Now, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, and I Googled that. I Googled that. So I may not know what I'm talking about. But that up here is what Dr. Langton told me that my, my that my pituitary gland looked it wasn't shaped right it was swiveled up and this down here is what I googled online what a normal pituitary gland is supposed to be like what do you think some people like to think I'm just psychosomatic I see these symptoms and all of a sudden I have them no it was the other way around when I went in to see Dr. Roseanne Barker, so many years ago, follow-up appointment, I was telling her about my sleeping problem. And I was telling her I always wake up early in the morning. It's almost like 95% of the time I wake up early in the morning with this anxiety disorder. Red face, which by the way, that's one of the symptoms there of pituitary gland problems, remember? Red face, I'll get goosebumps all over me. It's always first thing in the morning. Dr. Rosen Barker said, that sounds like that's something in your hormones. I said, really? She said, yeah, because when you're sleeping at night, when your brain's in REM sleep, that's when your body replenishes, rebuilds your hormones of your 24 hour period of the day. That's when your hormone levels are the highest and then they taper down throughout the day. So if you're having that every single morning, that's something going on with your hormones. What controls your hormones, pituitary? See my pituitary gland? You see that? I don't know. That's just what I Googled. That's what I was told. So I'm going to talk to my primary care doctor. I mean my endocrinologist, endocrinologist office about this on Monday. They need, I want to know what's going on in my brain. Or I'll make this an ER visit. I don't want to go to the ER. Don't want to go to the ER. I hate that place. That place is hard sitting there in a chair with my back and my neck problem. Even their beds, even if I was laying back there in their emergency room bed, I don't like that place. I don't like being in a room several hours. I don't like that. Who would? But I, got, I, I just want to at least know. Wouldn't you want to know? Or would you just not give a damn? I think you'd want to know too. I'd just like to know. And of course, get it fixed. Thanks for watching. Look at this right here that I found on the internet. I know not everything you read on the internet is the truth, but that is certain because that's exactly what I'm having problems with. And plus my doctors told me I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, the testicle thing, the testicles, my body doesn't make any testosterone. I can't speak for women, but men, that's where our tes testosterone comes from, the testicles. So my testicles not make any testosterone. Now, I don't have any problems with sex. Don't have a problem with sex as long as I'm taking my testosterone medicine. I don't take my testosterone medicine, you know, I got a problem. But I'm not having sex for now either. But anyway. Exactly where I'm having problems at in this picture. And that's exactly what the pituitary gland does.